Greetings and salutations. I'm excited about this. This, this, this is going to be a good one. Okay. And then we also have James Cotter. I, I, I feel it's time I get a nickname. Like maybe James the Dog Boy Cotter. Mm. That's not bad. Let's work on that. Let's workshop this. Well, it's we interesting. Got nick- we got a nickname for you. We got a few that you just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then and then see, like we've got Jack Hall, but but now Jack could be like Jugger Jack Hall or something like that. So I don't know. Jugger works Jugger great Jack, with Jugger with Jack, Jack Hall or Jim. Jack. It's pretty oh, yeah. good stuff, boys. Uh, any of you ever uh, spent your entire life like me, uh, confusing Rutger Hauer and Wiggs Hauser? No, not even once. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me, okay? Totally just you. <laughs> well, uh, and speaking of Rutger Hauer, of course. Today's movie is The Blood of Heroes, and this one was brought to us by Nick. And so, uh, Nick, you've got you've got a lot of work to do right now. So you not you you're going to explain to us why this um, a is a one shit wonder, and then you get to explain the movie to us. Okay, this is a one shit wonder because the director, although has quite a career of writing films, this is the only film he's ever directed. Um, and, uh, it came on my, my radar actually in my teens and I've loved this film and I always wanted a sequel or something to it. It was like one of those like weird video nasties that I never even thought came out in theaters. Although I now just doing research, uh, for, for this podcast, I found it did some places. Um, and it's just a wonderful little film that I love, but at the same time, it is a movie about the future where people play games with dog skulls. So it has the boogaloo element. Um, In this film, Joan Chen plays Kira, who is just desperate for any kind of recognition outside her workaday world in the post galactic future, farming what looks to be dead vegetables. Um, and her ticket out of this mess is to play jugger, a futuristic sport that's kind of like football, but it has a dog skull and weapons, and it's awesome in every every way. So uh, when a jugger team comes to town to challenge her little team, she joins up with them, and they go on an adventure and sort of experience the future world trying to join the mysterious league in the red, I believe it's called the red cities, the big league. They're going to try and Rutger Hauer is in this and he's always awesome. Well, Rutger Hauer is definitely in this for sure. Yes. And, and he's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, love, I love Rutger. I, I'm, I'm told that it's Rutger, but let's not do that. No, well, so, yeah, it's funny because when you said when you said that, it's it's interesting because then I went I went on a pronunciation site and and 
somebody pronounced and, and it came up with Rucker. So I'm like, well, I don't care. <laughs> you call him what you like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this guy has been playing old men since like <laughs> he was 19. So he's definitely like visibly like you just go, that guy's a Rugger. <laughs> And and Joan Chen is a Joan Chen. Yeah. God damn Joan Chen, I tell you. I I had a such a crush on Joan Chen in the in the nineties. Uh mainly because of uh of uh, Twin Peaks. Mm. Uh, oh man, yes. Oof. So uh this is this is right around the Twin Peaks era, wouldn't it be? Like uh nineteen yeah, nineteen ninety, so yeah. yeah. And the only reason to watch the movie The Hunted. <laughs> That's, I remember that movie. Yep. Wasn't she in China Beach? Uh, I don't believe so, but I could be wrong. She's somebody else. Either way, she's definitely, you know, attractive. Attractive. I Woman may have masturbated over an Asian in China Beach, <laughs> but I can't say it's her for sure. <laughs> that was. That was that's a lot of detail. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a surprising you amount. Just, of detail. just brought to, brought this to a new place. Uh, not, not often is something I said that completely makes me silent. <laughs> yeah, it's like I I actually don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I was kind of hoping at that point someone someone else would go. Oh, now I know. What you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, now I remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. <laughs> and the lady was hot though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the fact that we're talking about everything but this movie, what does that say about it? Well, I'm I'm going to say that uh, you know, having thought quite a bit about the apocalypse this uh, this year. Uh, I think the job I want in the apocalypse is uh, leather mask maker. Oh yeah. yeah. I think that like gig. that seems to be a gig that that uh you know just is worth doing. Like that's uh everyone seems to need one. No, you never see in these movies like like let's get revenge on the the leather mask maker. They're all like, "Hey, like might need that guy later." I, what job I, would you have? Uh, I I want to take the the guy what recycles car tires. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's there's oodles of uh, rolls for car tires in the old and car they tires. <laughs> and they all seem to do with headgear. It's weird. Just everybody has a tire on their head in some way. See again, <laughs> like Stan and I could open a business. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's got the raw materials. I incorporate that into the masks and or helmets that I make. Mm-hmm. I think this is a good. Uh, it, it, Jack, uh, what would what would you be your your apocalyptic job? Or oh. you call us apocalyptic? This is oh before. come on, he is a stone thrower if I ever saw a stone thrower. <laughs> no, no, but but okay. Here's in relation to the movie. Now you re- you remember Joan didn't want the scrawny guy, so Jack yeah. Jack might actually have a chance in the in this uh, most apocalyptic future. Like they wouldn't. Like they wouldn't eat me and roast me and keep that knife <laughs> really going for a couple of years. <laughs> what was that? What, what were those guys' jobs? What do you think they would call that job? Uh, like a male courtesan? <laughs> like what's the, get, what's the <laughs> harem boys? <laughs> they're like they're like a re, they're like a reward if you win kind of thing. Yeah, so. crappy prize. I think crappy prize yeah. is, is the the price. The <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I like uh, uh, so uh, so in this movie, Joan Chen is trying to prove herself, and uh, Rutger Hauer really uh, believes in her, and uh, and uh, <laughs> okay, Rutger Hauer, um, <laughs> really, she's trying to prove herself, and and then uh, and then finally, all the other guy at the other guys in the uh, the group, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio especially, uh, who is, looks like a baby in this. My um, my does he ever? I, I I I show I pointed him out uh, to my wife while I was watching this, and I said, "Hey, do you recognize that guy?" And she did not. Honestly, um, I I from for <laughs> a half the movie, I was just like, "Wow, Adam Baldwin must be really old." <laughs> <laughs> What was getting me was I, I don't know how was it that Vincent D'Onofrio 
uh, manages to look in a movie up at a post-apocalyptic future, uh, <laughs> less run down than he did during uh, CSI. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and things like that. Like, <laughs> I, I, about, uh, about 15 or 20 minutes into this, as I, as Joan Chan's trying to prove herself, I'm like, is this, is this Rudy? Is this movie Rudy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Joan, Joan Chan is uh, Sean Astin just <laughs> looking for a shot. <laughs> Pretty much. He, he did this two years, by the way, after he had done uh, Full Metal Jacket. And funny, he looks older in Full Metal I, Jacket. I know. Was, I know. That's, that's, that's why I was looking it up because I, I thought the this haircut. movie was out. Yeah. 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 He's oh. that good of an actor. He's playing younger. He is. He oh. is a great actor. I love him. But, uh, but yeah. Also, about 20 minutes into this movie, I... I decided that uh, that Nick had tricked me into watching sports. Yes, <laughs> yes, he did. There's a significant amount of this film given over to the sport that the uh, the dog skull football thing that they're doing, like a more of a rugby, I guess. Which, mm-hmm. which actually has become some sort of organized sport in real life. Yeah. Oh, nice. Juggers an actual thing in in, in Australia and, and uh, Germany. They play it. We've even had international matchups and stuff now. Yes. <laughs> Although it does kind of look like the Harry Potter shit you see at cons. Wow. With foam stuff <laughs> and a lot of imaginary work going on. Anyways, uh, Nick, you interrupted our journey there. James, what happened to you 30 minutes into the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I realized, that if uh, if you took out these slow motion shots of Joan Chen, this movie would be about 65 minutes instead of <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, it's quite a bit of slow mo once you get in. It makes just we see basically three entire matches of what is not a short sport. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I, I would have been. I think uh, the, the amazing thing to me about them making it a real sport is because uh, I feel like I would have. I, I really was wanting an explanation of the rules and roles better. Like obviously there was not a lot of rules because you know. But there obviously was roles and or positions that people were playing, and I'm like, other than the quick, uh, I don't, and I guess there's the person with the chain. I can't remember what they were called. Like, I, I, like what are the rest yeah. of them? They just seem to be hitting each other, and no, there's no strategy or pattern. Well, no, there, there, there is like, strategy you know. because you can is swap. There? You can, yes, because because like they were like, oh, you know, I'll, I take this guy, then you come over and hold him down. And I do something else. There was the quick, the charge, the slash, the guy with the chain, and the sword. Okay, so what's the difference between the uh, the slash and the charge? The slash has a uh, small two blade, or it, it's just sort of a pole, and the charge has a pole with a nubbin on the end and a hook on the other. <laughs> Okay. No. So other than the weapon, what's the difference in the role? <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta be on. In fairness to the, whatever they call it the sport in this movie, that's still more than I understand of cricket. The game. <laughs> it's called the game. <laughs> it's just the game. Okay, yeah, that makes the sense. The game. Yeah, they called it that. Yeah. That's all. It's an interesting us. movie. It's, it's, that where the, it's an that where the rapper gets his name from. Mm, yeah. I, I, yeah, sure. exactly. I saw this. I mean, I mean, I saw this also. Uh, you know, like. It was on, you know, it was, it was for a while there. It was a pretty regular film on, you know, the, your paid network, like movie network channels, you know, like, you, you know, and, and so I, I mean, I remember seeing it like that too. And it kind of like, it was like, it was, I remember enjoying it at the time. It was, you know, like something where I was like, eh, you know, I hadn't seen a lot like that and it felt a little different and didn't make a huge impression on me or anything like that. So it was interesting to go back and rewatch it because I mean, it definitely immediately, like it's, it's like, 10 seconds in, you're like, oh, yeah, I know what this is. You know, I didn't recognize the name because the name's kind of generic here, which is probably why, what was it called? Like, I think the international release is called Rise of the Juggers or something like, like that. Or Ballad of the Juggers or something like that. Sal- oh, Salute yeah, Salute. Salute to the Juggers. Salute to the Juggers. Yeah, that's, that's a better name as far as, like, being memorable, the Blood of Heroes, which is just so generic. But, but yeah, I mean, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, this is this is film. This is going to be interesting to revisit. I, I really I hadn't, hadn't come across this. Uh and uh, even though I am a fan of uh, Ratgauer Hauer, um, <laughs> Mr. Hauer, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hauer, uh, what, what's what's Mr. in, uh, in Dutch? Raptor. Um, Raptor Hauer. Raptor Hauer. <laughs> Salo. Just call him Salo. Salo. 
Salvo. That's a, that's a memorable name right there. Oh, so. isn't it? Just, um, yeah, yeah I, I literally looked that up uh, 15 minutes ago, and it had still gone from my head. Um, <laughs> so I hadn't seen this. I, I really, I really, really enjoyed the film. It was, uh, uh, it was. Uh, I, I like the uh, post-apocalyptic films. Um, I, mean, I, I like what they get right. I like what they get wrong. It turns out there aren't sports in the apocalypse. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there are no <laughs> gatherings in the apocalypse. So, I mean, Other than that, it's about the same. Uh, anything else you want to say before we get into the scoring of this? Well, film? I mean, it's because the thing is, it is a tough film to to classify because it's not a Hollywood film. I mean, it's, it's an Australian American production and filmed in Australia, and, it, and it's not it's it's not really it's not really a B film, even though it's not a big budget film. You know, and it's not really, it's like got a cult following, obviously, but it's not, it's not really an art house film. I guess it's, it's, it's like a high concept indie film is almost what it is. Like, does that sound right? For, yeah, for years, I thought it was an HBO original. Yeah, I could it's see a, that. Yeah. Like I say, it was, it was on those networks all the time. But yeah, I mean, when we're talking about David Peoples, I mean, this is a guy who wrote 12 Monkeys and, and co-scripted. Blade Runner and, and he, you know, wrote the script to Unforgiven in 1976 and wasn't made until film until 1991, much to Stan's, uh, regret. So I, like he's, he's, you know, I mean, like I don't know if we, if we got a better pedigree <laughs> than that guy. That is, any the, film we, <laughs> that is the weirdest film to have on your, like everyone else likes this and I hate it list. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I guess everyone's got one of those, like, but just it, well, I mean, perhaps I need to watch it again, but it just bored the shit out of me. So it's just like I'm okay. not going to make you watch. You li- okay. Have you I'm not, not seen asked you to since... watch something that you uh, you didn't like? But <laughs> have you not watched it to, since uh, 1993? Mm, probably not. Nope. Yeah, yeah, it's worth revisiting. Yeah, you're basically the same person you were in 1993. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't imagine that your your view on things would have changed that much. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of westerns though, so that's all. Yeah, I have something to do with it. But the point being though that yeah, it's just this is this is an interesting film. I don't think it's the right film for this podcast. I think it's it's too good a film. You know, it's a B, it's a B, like I say, it's an indie film. It's too good a film as far as being, like, it's not, it's not like you're like, oh, there's schlock. There's like no schlock to this. Uh, I don't know what our, your scores will be, but, you know, things like that. It's like, I immediately look at these things and go, well, how's it going to score in that first category? And if it's a no, then I, I throw it out, right? And I just don't, it's kind of like, you know, we've come across this before where it's like, yeah, it's a, that's a, that's a fine film, but not what this podcast is looking for, which, so yeah. what I'm saying, trying to say ahead of time is, the scores will likely reflect this to people, but we're not saying don't watch it. We're saying don't watch it with your boogaloo lens because, you know, it's it's probably not fair to the movie. Yeah, I'd, I'd highly recommend watching this. Yeah. So now we do the thing? Yeah. Now yeah. we do the thing. <laughs> All right. In our search for the ultimate B movie, we rate each film in five categories, none of which are objective quality. The first category is called Schlock Appeal, and we start with Stan. When uh, when Nick, you know, pitched this movie with Rutger Hauer and Joan Chen and Vincent D'Onofrio um, with a dog skull and a sport, I was truly excited. And then I watched the movie. Well, well, I mean, I, I watched the movie in in and about trying or trying to keep myself awake, and then <laughs> I finished watching the movie. And I was just like, mm, now I'm not quite as excited for for uh, talking about it. I'll give it a three. Um, yeah, I have to admit, when I picked this, I hadn't actually watched it throughout. I I remembered like a lot of the schlockier elements that that it's a sports movie in a post apocalyptic future, played with quite often a fresh dog skull. Um, so yeah, I can't go high on schlock either. I'll give it a four though. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, you know, it, the the elements are there, but the execution is not schlocky at all, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the problem with the film. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, uh, uh, you know, three seems about right. Uh, three sounds good to me too. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I, I mean I think it is it is playing a sport with a dog skull. It is apocaly- It is post apocalyptic, and post apocalyptic is going to be a little schlock all the time. Yeah, uh, it, it, you know, like. I, oh, sorry. You know, go ahead. Shouldn't cut you off there. I uh, I was gonna say, like, I hope 
I hope Jack has more act that he can add to my comment. <laughs> 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 well, it's just it's it's kind of funny because, like I say, I remember liking it back in the day. Uh, you know, not like like, but now it's like I, I think I was also I I I, not, I wouldn't say I was falling asleep, but but it was it was slow. It's a slow paced film, which well, Unforgiven is obviously too. I, but, you know, I will will say we are the international cut, which is much longer. Ten minutes longer, I, yeah. I did watch both cuts in pre- preparation for this, just see to see the difference. The international cut adds absolutely nothing important. I definitely go with the shorter version. Well, isn't the, isn't it the, moves more brisk, briskly. Isn't the ending supposed to be? I mean, the international cut's the one that's more largely preferred by, and I know the fans and people and the director, obviously. It, it isn't it. It gives a much less. Uh, optimistic ending and, and, and isn't that supposed to have more weight to it i i, I don't know I've, i i my read on it is it's sort of the same but i i found most of the difference in the international cut was we had less lead up to the red city which is really where the movie sort of drags mm-hmm. um you you don't have the guys in the jeep you've got one less game in there the boring game Right before the, they decided to go go to the Red City, um, I just found it a, a the American cut a much brisker movie and just didn't have the slow points. I did I didn't think that the difference of ending was really much to make a big deal about. Well, and obviously the the cut I would have seen all those years ago would have been the U.S. cut because that's what it would have been airing on the on the you know the paid movie channels at the, at the time. So I mean, yeah, I, uh, you know, it's kind of it's it, it, I could see I could see definitely why you were saying that you were bored uh, there, Stan. I, could, I I get it. It's 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 very slow moving. You know, more so. It's I say it moves slower than Unforgiven. <laughs> I actually I actually found it slower once they were in the city. Because, I mean, narratively, you know they're going to make it, like they're going to get um, their challenge accepted uh, eventually. So the amount of time that between when they're denied the challenge against the the uh, um, the professional level, I can't, I can't the uh, league, the, uh, the league. Thank you. Uh, the time between that and when they these things, didn't he? The game, <laughs> no, the league. I know that's that's why it's not sinking. That's not why it's not uh, sticking. Probably. Uh, yeah, I mean the amount of time between when they first enter the city and when they actually start that final uh, combat is quite long, and narratively, it's not like it's not like they're going to walk away at that point. You know they're going to have that match, so um, it's kind it, of plods a little for me because of that. Yeah. It does depend a lot on the sexual chemistry of Joan Jen and Rutger Hauer. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just an odd matchup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who, as you said, always looked old, so he always looked, he <laughs> looks like her dad. Um, <laughs> uh, the next category is called More Did you give a than, score? Oh, yeah, you did three. Uh, I did, I did three. Yeah. Uh, more Heart Than Budget and converted to American dollars uh, from Australian, uh, 6.1 million. In 1989. 1989, yeah. Oh. All right. Well, the, I mean, they got good use out of the uh, tires, of tires in this movie. Um, um, you know, Rutger Hauer is an interesting actor because he's he's he doesn't often uh, go overboard with his delivery on things, but he most definitely didn't go overboard with his delivery in uh, in this case. Um, I don't know that anybody did except for Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, overall, I I don't I don't know. I, I have nothing really to say about this, so I'm going to give it a three. Wow. Um, yeah, no, I thought everybody was in it. I mean, sure, like, no, it's chewing up the scenery, but I mean, the cast is all very talented, which makes this even harder to pick, but I don't think anybody phoned it in. I wasn't wincing at dialogue once in this movie. Um, and I mean, this looks much better than a $6.5 million movie in even adjusted for the time period so uh, yeah i'll I'll go seven uh you know i, I mean it's a it's a okay we have expectations on what on what these like post-apocalyptic you know few films will look like and it follows very much in line with with what we kind of would expect 
I think, you know, the, the thing about if you're doing a movie set in the future or, you know, and in, in a post-apocalyptic world, probably that's the easiest one to do because you don't need special effects. It doesn't need any of that stuff to tell its story. It could have used more money, probably. Did it, did it need more money? No. Did they try to make the best movie they could? And was the, was the budget a hindrance? Because it wasn't massive? No. Um, so six? Um, I, really what stood out for me in this movie was the, the makeup effects and how much care went into really making these, uh, juggers beat up by the, like, as the movie goes along. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't even mention Delroy Lindo, who's a fantastic awesome. actor. Uh, not really underused actor. He, really, he never got that role that I think, uh, you know, broke him loose, but I've always, I always enjoyed him. Uh, and he is so scarred up by the end of this film. Um, so six for me as well. I think there was, uh, I think that's really where they were, uh, put in the box was in what these characters looked like, making them part of the, uh, the set. You sold me. Uh, I'll, I'll go up to, I'll go up to a five. All right. All right. I, I, uh, solo the game if you want a great film with, uh, with, with him in a lead role. I mean, I'll give that, of course, then you'd be watching sports. What was the name of it? Soul of the Game. It's, it is an H. I believe that's an HBO movie. It, we, yeah, mm. it's based on uh, the real life. Uh, it, the the other players that weren't Jackie Robinson right. that could have broken into the into the Major League oh, okay. Baseball. Yeah, okay. it's really it's a really cool story. Hmm. Uh, Clockers. Uh, that was mm. the uh, the one that I really loved him in. Great movie, great uh, movie. All right, what the fuck moments. All right. Well, I consider it what the fuck that uh, that people are actually playing the sport. That's what I consider <laughs> what the fuck. Um, you know, I, do they use a dog skull, <laughs> or do they use a falsified dog skull? No, they don't. They don't even use a pike. You you have to get like a, a football in a bowl. It's no, I mean, I, I think he's asking in real life where they're using a real dog skull. Is, no, no, no. In it, real life, they're using a football in a bowl. Yeah, that's 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 actually what I was asking. He, he got it oh, right. okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, the sure the concept. I guess I guess they have lots of dogs and lots of dog skulls, so therefore it works as well as a ball as as anything. But dogs are food at that point. Yeah, yeah. Well, so like, why not? They, they tell you from the top that no one knows why they use a dog skull. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, there that's, you go. There that's you go. good writing. Uh, yeah, um, people are gonna ask. Tell them we don't know why. Three. Oh, that was your score. Three. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad they didn't. Expl- Would have been weird to explain it, honestly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, yeah, this is not high on WTFs. I mean, even even the stuff that play played weird back then, such as the women taking. Uh, Taking their sexual conquests uh, from these small towns and stuff that played weird. I remember in the nineties. Now, not so much. Everything sort of has a logic to it, so I can't go high on this. I'll go three as well. It's actually kind of progressive that this film that the that the women play with the men, you know, because yeah. we still don't see that in sports, you know. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's it, that's that's actually. An interesting point. Yeah, I mean, the biggest WTF is if he knows the film so intimately, why did pick, Nick pick it, knowing that it has no schlock or WTFs? Uh, but it, it, it had been a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that bodes poorly for memorable moments. Two. <laughs> I'll give it a two. I, the, the only real kind of standout what the fuck for me is they, they go to the city – uh, they're heading to the city, and the city is like an elevator in the middle of the desert, and then it's an underground um, world that they go into. So they're going in this elevator that's moving, I'd say, like maybe maybe like a foot a second-ish, maybe a bit faster than that. And it's clear that hours and hours have passed. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm trying to – like. I mean, what, you, they didn't give you a real number for how far down they must be, but I mean, I think center of the earth would be optimistic. That would be, <laughs> would be pretty comparable for, cause they fall, uh, people fall asleep. It's yes. that long. <laughs> so, um, that's a, that's a bit what I call it, uh, journey to the center of the Thunderdome. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So only two for me though, because uh, again, it's uh, it's it's a sports movie in the post-apocalypse. There's there's quite a bit of those um, memorable moments. Two. Yeah, I'm just gonna give it a two. I'm not gonna remember other than the fact that it's, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know. I I love this movie. Um, I uh, like every every time I see it comes on a streaming service, I'm tempted to click on it. Um, so obviously it stuck with me. Not to mention in the WDF, we probably should have mentioned the old guy's backpack. That was great. The the old Chinese ca- cabinet on his back. That was hilarious. But uh. Yeah, that's not memorable. Um, but I will. So I, I have to go with sex. So I love this. Yeah. Uh, like I had forgotten the movie, but as soon as I saw the first frames, I remembered it and I remembered where I watched it when I saw it and, and I had memory of the juggers and everything like that. So, so it, it's probably like I forgot it and yet I have images of it clearly burned into my mind. So it succeeded at some level in this. Uh, the fact that it that it made a a actual sport a real life sport kind of gives it a little extra of an uptick on this for me, so I'll give it a six. Uh, I think there's chunks of this that I'll remember. There's there's large swaths that I won't. Like I'm gonna remember the sport, but not necessarily much like of the third act when they go into the underground city. Uh, so five for me on this one. The final category is crazy concept. Uh, it's it's Rudy with a dog skull in uh, in Mad Max Thunderdome Land. Um, I mean, I think the pitch would be a tad weirder than than a normal pitch, but it, but it's it's really a combination of movies that we've seen, you know, a whole lot. So I'll go with a four. Wow. Um, yeah, I thought it would, this this would be the cleanup category. Um, yeah, th- there is no future sport. Uh, genre you've got like maybe four films um so yeah i have to go higher and i mean this wasn't exactly like a bargain basement it wasn't expensive but it wasn't a bargain basement film so i do think it that ups the crazy factor on the concept a little i i'll go as high as an eight even um, Rudy came out in '93, so I don't know if I'd call it Rudy. Mm, Though I get what you're saying. It's, it's a sports <laughs> movie, you know. I, it, yeah, it, but I, that's I the can thing, read right? exactly where this was going, at, you know, five seconds into the movie. So that's true. And, and the, the thing about it is, it's not a crazy concept. The sport is a crazy concept. The movie, there's nothing crazy about this at all. Like it totally fits in with the genre and everything like that. There's absolutely nothing. The sport itself, the concept is crazy. But then if you start thinking about it, it's like, well, if you're in the, people would want a sport. They would not have, like, look at baseball. I mean, baseball was created because people didn't have much, they had a ball and a stick. Like, what would people have? And, and so it kind of makes sense, even if you look at it from the perspective of the world they're in. So I think it's pretty low. I think it's a three. I, uh- I think what boosts it above that for me is that uh, our heroic lead is Joan Chen. Uh, That's true. Like it, so that you know this sports movie thing, and and uh, there's not you know hundreds, but there is you know Rollerball and Death Race 2000 and all the and so there are all all those kinds of films. So um, a five for me on this. Uh, you know what? The Joan Chen is a good point because it really is her movie. I mean, Rucker Hauer, Rucker, Ratker, but <laughs> Ripley, whatever you want to call him, he's it's he's kind of a secondary player in many ways. It's really her film as the lead, so that, I, that that's interesting. That that puts it up to a four. All right. And each season we have six secret modifiers. None of them apply to this film. <laughs> that's that's become a regular occurrence this season. It, it really it really has. Um, and uh, perhaps, perhaps when we're workshopping uh, modifiers for next season, we'll take that into account. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that brings us to a final total of forty-three point five out of one hundred, uh, which puts it tied with Halloween Six: Curse of Michael Myers, producer's cut. Mm-hmm. So it uh, just it it. Good job, at least, Nick. Destroyed Food Fight. Just <laughs> slaughtered it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Food Fight couldn't... I mean, it's we call Food Fight the bottom of the octagon, so it's not like it can move further out than that. But it's, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it puts it in, like, 87th place or whatever we're at. Yeah. But 
It's okay. Uh, if nothing else, the next film, who knows how to score, but it's certainly going to be a hard left turn from Blood of Heroes. It's, it is. And, uh, and, you know, I, I mean, hell, before we even go to, go to our business, our next film, of course, coming up is, uh, is Jack's Fatal Deviation, which sounds like you need to take, you know, go for surgery for that. But, uh, uh do you want to explain, um, why Fatal Deviation is a one shit wonder? Nope. Okay. All right. Good enough. <laughs> We could probably do that in the episode we're talking about. Uh, That's what I'm thinking. Is make them tune in. All right. Well then, just give them a tease. Give them a tease, though. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, it is Ireland's only uh, mix or martial arts movie, so we'll say that. Okay. Gotcha. All right, uh, Jim, do some business. All right. Uh, please subscribe and rate the podcast on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, and uh, we are. S- Sponsored by WeTalkPodcasts.com. They have a website where you can find this old octagon we've been talking about, the goddamn octagon. And also they have a Facebook and they have a Twitter. And we are on Instagram at Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. Yay, us. Good for Um, us. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Season 12 concludes next episode with Fatal Deviation and also concludes with us choosing our movies for season 13. So, so many reasons to tune in to next episode, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's right. And to find out what the real, what the film really, why it qualifies under this category. Ooh, yeah, wow, like the drum That's the real just, book. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. No question about it. All right, well, I, th- I think we're done talking about uh, Blood of Heroes and, uh, and Juggers and stuff, so let's, let's go and uh, get ready for Fatal Deviation. So, for Jim, and for Jack, and for Nick, I am your host, 8th Dan Stanadu, and thanks for listening to the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo! From the author of Blade Runner and Lady Hawk. Juggers coming! Juggers! Juggers! Juggers coming! They're coming! They're coming! In a future ravaged by war, all eyes are on Juggers. Outcast champions playing a game of survival. Punish him! Punish him! This is the story of Kidda, who has heard tales of a world far better than the one fate has given her. Is there really such a thing as self? She will do anything. I got speed, I can run. I'll quick for you. She will risk everything to be one of the judges. It is the story of Salo, banished from a place of honor in the underground Red City because of a woman. I like the blood of heroes. Now, this woman will lead him back. We could play a team from the League. And theirs will be a journey through a gauntlet of time and trial. Get her loose! To that fabled city where Sallow will challenge the jugger who took his title. He could lose that other eye easily enough. Where Kidda will discover that the world of her dreams is no dream at all. I don't want the attention of the League. But I do. Rutger Hauer. It must be solved. Skiing with no scars. I like scars. And Joan Chen of The Last Emperor. Make something to challenge! 100 stars! Three times! The salute of the Jugger. I wanted to win. It's not over. 